John Puig is the driving force behind a quiet revolution in southwest Florida, changing the world one car at a time by replacing standard diesel fuel with an earth-friendly solution to pollution, used vegetable oil. What I'm hoping to do is generate a public awareness that of twofold. One, that biofuels do exist and work and become a working example of it. And two, to raise people's awareness of their ability to change their consumption habits. Because here I'm an individual in a car driving on 100% vegetable fuel, it is a possibility. Although it sounds like a revolutionary idea, running a diesel engine on vegetable oil isn't new at all. The man that invented this engine, Rudolf Diesel, didn't have petroleum diesel to run it on. He ran it on peanut oil. And so we've come full circle in that context. To work in a diesel engine, vegetable oil must be heated or treated to match the consistency of petroleum diesel. I install a parallel fuel system that heats the vegetable oil fuel. So when the vegetable oil gets to the diesel engine, the fuel must be consistently clean and consistently at a temperature of over 150 degrees Fahrenheit. Consistently clean fuel requires careful filtering of the used fryer oil Puig gets for free from area restaurants. The dirty vegetable oil is poured through a simple filter and allowed to settle in a 32-gallon garbage can. The longer it sits, the less I spend on my final filters because the more gravity takes care of the work and puts all the sediment to the bottom of the settling containers. So I can keep my fuel costs at about five cents a gallon with letting the oil sit around after I collect it for a month. The settled oil is then transferred to another trash can where the oil is pumped through an ultra-fine filter that removes any remaining particles. The oil comes through this tank to this filter which has a turbine housing and it centrifuges the oil then runs it through a filter membrane of two microns. I run the oil through the tank and let it circulate several times and um, effectively it becomes cleaner each time it passes through and I call that spinning or polishing of the oil. The cleaning equipment and all, there's a six, seven hundred dollars in parts, a majority of which is the Pacific filter and for the cars there's another fifteen hundred dollars in parts. So there's less than two thousand dollars in stuff to change it over to run in vegetable oil. You compare five cents to the gallon to two seventy-five or three dollars to the gallon and 20,000 miles this equipment's paid for in your fuel production. Puig can spin a 25 gallon batch of fuel in about half an hour. Filling his 12 gallon veggie oil tank takes only minutes more and then his car is ready to roll. The car will start on diesel. We run for about four minutes until the system warms up and there's a switch on the dash. I go down for diesel, up for vegetable oil. You switch up the vegetable oil, then the heated vegetable oil gets to the engine and then the engine runs without a hitch on 100% vegetable oil. The car will run smoother and quieter on vegetable oil, noticeably different. Also noticeably different is the smell of a veggie burner's exhaust which may inspire a craving for French fries. Although he gets lots of fast food jokes, Puig is proud of what's not in his exhaust. And it reduces exhaust emissions radically. For example, um, it'll reduce the sulfur emissions, which are the acid rain component of our exhaust, 100%. And it reduces the particulate matter, the smoke matter of the exhaust by over half. So it's a very effective tool to utilize to reduce your environmental impact of driving. Although the used fryer oil is free, there's no free ride for veggie burning vehicles. Puig must pay road taxes just like everyone else. It's a very simple process. You fill in an application and then you submit road tax for how many gallons of fuel you burn. Although road taxes add about 28 cents per gallon to his costs, Puig's nearly free fuel is an earth-friendly green alternative that saves him plenty of green. Despite its many advantages, however, Puig admits that using French fry fat as fuel isn't a mainstream solution to pollution. It's not a commercially available fuel, so the individual then has to be accountable for their own fuel and make their own fuel. 
which it's not a great inconvenience, but it does take some effort. What I hope to do is raise people's awareness of biofuel in general, and I hope that that'll create a market for biodiesel, and that will be a form of vegetable-derived fuel that you can just pull up to a pump, pump it into your diesel vehicle with no vehicle modifications, and just run on the same as conventional diesel. Any diesel engine, including marine engines, can run on biodiesel. Biodiesel is simply a vegetable oil that you've taken some of the glycerin out of so that it behaves like petroleum diesels so that there is no modification where the engine itself is concerned or the tanks. You use it just like you would a petroleum diesel and you can mix them in any quantities you want. So it's interchangeable so we, I don't have to have separate fuel tanks or heaters for the oil, that sort of thing. It's a very simple, straightforward system. But finding biodiesel by land or by sea isn't easy in southwest Florida. Right now in southwest Florida, there's nobody distributing it, but I'm hoping that's going to change in the not too distant future. Now I've got to drive to the other coast, Fort Lauderdale, Hialeah, Miami, um, places of at least that far away. Yet David Strickland doesn't mind going the extra mile for biodiesel. There are lots of benefits in my mind ranging from geopolitical issues to environmental issues to the price of the fuel. The thing I like about it best, my engine likes it a lot better than petroleum diesel. It just burns cleaner, it has better lubricity, and if I could stay with 100% biodiesel, I would be doing it right now. So even if we just put a small percentage biofuel into our diesels, we could reduce the sulfur emission 100% and reduce the acid rain component of our exhaust 100%. And that would be a radical change for just a small percentage of biofuel.